on the 17th of September, I turned 30. And to be honest, I never had any preconceived notions of what I thought 30 would be like. I knew that I was looking forward to it. I knew that I've always felt excited coming to this age. Maybe it's all because when I think of the age 30, I think of something solid to be firm or stable in shape. And 30 feels like a time in my life where a lot of things have solidified in me. I know what I want for sure in life. Now, whether or not I am close to those things is neither here nor there because I actually know. Like, I know and I think that deserves some recognition. In a world where people are so convinced to want other people's desires, I only want mine. And I think as much as I've stripped away my layers of being a people pleaser, there's a part of me that really wants to perform, to entertain. What can I say? I'm a little sick in that aspect. And when people hear that you love to perform, people automatically assume that it's coming from a shallow place, that you love the attention, when genuinely, I personally love being able to tell an honest story. And so I start it with my own, and that's why I'm here. But anyway, how are you? I have been getting off the relaxation train that was my week off that I had for my birthday. And when I mean a week off, I mean a full week of doing not, not much. I could have created, I chose not to, I didn't even think of an episode or a title because I just wanted to be free. I wanted to feel lazy. I wanted to fully succumb to rest. And when I did that, unfortunately, because I am human, I felt a lot of guilt after that. What is that? It's like you need the rest the most, but in that rest, you feel ashamed for taking it. I was at my most laziest, but it was also the most free that I've ever been in a very long time. And it almost scared me for a little bit because that was a point in my life that week where I just didn't have anything to say. And I'm doing things that require me to say things, so when nothing has come to mind, I got a little afraid, I'm not going to lie, but I chose to kind of trust it and write it out. And then in that time of silence, so much has come into my mind, I figured, why don't I make a video dedicating myself to all of the many ways I am becoming the love of my life and choosing to love myself in certain ways and finding better ways to love myself and my entire life I thought that at this moment someone is going to sweep me off my feet and love me in all of the ways that I dreamed and I realized you know that has not happened maybe that won't ever happen so the person that comes into my life to love me the most to cherish me to give me the love that I deserve has to be me and yeah I wanted to have a conversation and a chat about it because I feel like with the time that I've invested here um, and being honest and raw and authentic, it's time that I have a raw and authentic conversation about how I want to dedicate my 30th year on loving and being more gentle and more honest and free with myself. As if I couldn't get any more raw and any more real, there's deeper places that we can go and I'm excited to go there with you today. So, welcome to the Ron App Podcast, where we get real and then some. I'm your host, Jasmine Siri, and every week, I will speak on topics that align with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences, and I discuss how I navigate life consciously, so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind to reach our goals from a healed and open place together. So, let's get started. I think I was overall exhausted with making everyone responsible for the ways that I should feel and making myself a victim, always keeping my arms open for someone to fill in the space or someone to regulate my emotions. I think deep down, unintentionally, in my partnerships, what I was looking for was a father or someone that could help me regulate all of the emotions or regulate me in ways that I should have received when I was younger. 
and it's something that you notice as you get older and so a lot of the devastation in my relationships or some of the ones that were good were not necessarily things that I miss about the person or not necessarily the relationship coming to an end. It was that moment in between where you realize you're losing that example, you're losing that provision, you're losing that form of protection. And because it was something I never had, I was also in desperate need of it. And it was something that I fought against for a very long time. And it does something to your self-esteem that I didn't want it to do anymore. And I always thought that my relationships were to be a part of my regulation when really, you know, that was no one's job but my own. But when you don't have the tools in the very beginning, it is very hard to navigate because you grow up and you develop in your adulthood with all of these feelings and you realize, you know, there's nothing or no one going to come in and help you figure out what to do with them. You know, they're your job. I think overall... I got exhausted from looking outward for regulation. When you are someone that is anxiously attached, you are looking for someone to reassure you, someone to comfort you. You're looking for a partner that is like a cheerleader or just someone that is present with you and that has the capacity to be present with you at any given time and although it sounds great it is not realistic 100 percent and i think right now in the relationship that i'm seeing lately or currently or whatever it is it's kind of like because the person is so avoidant, I'm actually given the opportunity to fill in that space for myself and for a very long time. And honestly, it looked like abandonment. It looked like the other person just not genuinely caring about me or being selfish or all of the ways that I can demonize someone actually taking up space for themselves because I didn't have the capacity to or that I didn't know how. I sat in this emptiness and cried out for someone else. And I think that's when so many people suffer in their relationships or they look to find another person to fill in those gaps. And no matter how many people they try to choose to regulate this feeling, Eventually, they're going to always end up alone having to deal with that emptiness. And I think I really want to dedicate year 30 to filling up that space for myself and f genuinely feeling like enough and not feeling like I have to constantly put my hands on fire just to feel something. This is just me being real. Real and raw. And it's not easy to say like it's it's just not easy to say all of these things were not important enough for me to unpack until i realized how fast it stopped my creativity i think it is amazing that i have this urge to create things that are much larger than myself that it's mighty enough to go against the very big and important things inside of me that have kept me stagnant and it's not as easy as i speak it to be it takes time, a lot of energy, and a lot of hard realizations. You strip yourself to the very beginning of your own consciousness and make yourself completely bare so this divine spark can live out through you without any limitations. Creativity, in a way, forces me to be present and find joy in what is already there. There were so many times I halted my creativity because I didn't have the look, the body, the designer, or luxury aesthetic, and all of that lack of confidence or lack of appreciation for the simple and amazing things that I already do have were completely taken for granted, and that just makes me so sick to think about. 
You know, I love the small piece of life that I've created. I love my routes and my little coffees that I get and the resources that I have. It has been serving me and providing for me, but somehow in my mind, it wasn't enough to be used creatively or to show. I had a lot of shame that I needed to release and you know for a very long time I carried a lack of confidence around people being ashamed of me, ashamed of having me in their life for whatever reason. I felt that people were ashamed that I was in their life, that I wasn't a good look or maybe it stemmed from having an absent parent or present one that kind of struggled because of my existence and all of that was really just a projection of the shame that I had inside and really ways I couldn't accept or even stomach all of myself and all I did was attract more things that brought me shame and people that agreed with the shame that I felt inside about who I was people using me because I lacked boundaries or treated me like a small package because I had few successes or none that were important to them. All of these things I had to unlearn. And finally, at age 30, I realized I'm in the perfect place at the perfect time. I no longer have the energy to really hide versions of myself because I've already done the work to create space. There's things that I've done that I'm not necessarily proud of. There's things that I've said to people that I will never be able to take back. And I am well aware of the damage. I'm well aware of the pain. But at the same time, I've also had to forgive myself for that. And I can't wake up and waste any more time looking in the mirror and feeling shame for my mistakes and I feel like especially at this time now at age 30 if I've already laid it down for the most important thing in my life to forgive me I don't give a fuck if someone I just met doesn't forgive me or not and um yeah, it's, it's, it's complex. It's like, it's very, it's very interesting. It's like, I have, I want to use my voice because I want to help people, right? But it's also like, I do that because I also need help. And for the people that are like me that don't have the help, I decide to set myself on fire so that others can have a light and when people miss understand the purpose in which I do things and they have a pride and they're in their ego about who they think I am they assume that I do what I do because I think that I'm better or any of those things and then when they see my mistakes they choose to hang them over my head it's It just shows how small they are. And for a very long time, I would wake up and feel ashamed of myself that I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be making videos. I shouldn't be starting a podcast trying to help people. I'm this, I'm that. But it's like, I knew I was those things when I was called to do what I was supposed to do, but I was still, I still have the assignment. I'm still going to do it until the day that I leave here even the things that I reveal about myself even the things that they claim to know about me it's only a small percentage of who I actually am in full I am the only person that knows me fully so it doesn't really matter how people judge the small percentage it's like this weird in between I think being 30 is realizing that like both things can exist you can also care a lot and also not give a fuck. And I'm in this weird in between where I want to be liked, I want to be respected, but also I want to be respected by people that actually see me. 
I'm really embodying a true sense of self, one that exists without validation or really any outside force that could make me feel better or worse. I think it's really me becoming more curious and eager to explore deeper within myself, deeper ways to find fulfillment and happiness. And nothing has really brought me more fulfillment than dedicating my life to developing a craft and building something from scratch. There's nothing really like building something from the ground up because the beginning stages of creating anything takes a level of curiosity and bravery to pull something out of nothing. Most dare not to do it, not because doing it would be challenging or worthwhile, but because it would maybe call to discover too much within oneself that if unprepared could completely shatter a person's reality. I was listening to Jay Shetty like a year ago on proper ways of relating and finding intimacy. And one of the sure ways to build connection and love is to grow in curiosity for your partner, for anything that you want to love. And that simple mindset shift was just the permission that I needed for me to find ways of growing curious about myself so that I can obviously better love myself. Building a more intimate and sacred relationship with myself so that in return, when I'm speaking and I'm sharing different chapters of my life that are coming from the heart, the people who find comfort in listening to me will know that I'm coming from my most authentic place. And hopefully, a better community will form. The only reason why we even know each other is because one day I got curious enough about what I truly wanted to do with my time just to make me happy and making videos and starting a podcast was just honestly a natural expression of my own heart. I saw videography and filmmaking as a type of magic that I wanted to get my hands on and it's so cool to me but it's also scary and very challenging. If you're watching the best of the best and you're so intrigued by how they do what they do, when you're starting from scratch, you could feel like so hopeless and really intimidated. And for a long time, that's what I was. When I'm finding different topics and creatively writing, it has been a challenge for me to dive into the visual creativity of whatever it is I want to do. For a long time, I wanted to find a new chapter where I'm expressing myself and it was causing me to sit still in my creativity. I wanted this new chapter where I moved and I was turning 30 and all of these things to be this revamp of, you know, my podcast, the channel, all of the things that I wanted to do creatively. I saw everyone else's creativity and all of the ways that they've learned and grown and the ways that they express themselves in their channels as an opportunity for me to change what it is I do and because it's not genuinely me but more of whatever that is that it's absolutely amazing it was kind of making me turn inward into myself. I was less expressive. I stayed more silent. I was using so much time to try to create something that looked like someone else that I was taking time and energy away from doing the things that I do, which is right, which is explore deeply within myself. And I felt like it was a way of God kind of telling me that my assignment is not to be like them. It's literally to use my voice and share myself in the ways that I do. And if I put this to the back burner just to become something that I admire, I wouldn't be in service to the Most High. I wouldn't be in service to who I'm supposed to be serving. I would be in servitude for myself. And it's like this weird in-between of doing what I want, doing what I feel, and doing what's most in alignment with my purpose and what my obedience is calling me to do. It's very challenging because you work so hard, you want to be able to reach a point where you feel like you can do what you want to do. And I will be able to, it's just not the right time, and I was jumping the gun, but every time I heard the gunshot, 
and it was my time to act on the things that I wanted to do creatively, I just stood there because it just never felt right. It didn't feel like I was going to be walking in the same path that I was when I first started. And I told myself from the very beginning, like, if you're not walking with me, if God is not walking with me where I'm going, I don't want to step. It makes it too scary to step. So my 30th birthday and the week that I spent of just kind of being silent and not really doing anything, it was an opportunity for me to refocus myself on just the objective, the beginning, why I started doing what I was doing, and why I feel like when I reach a point where things are going good, I completely drop it to do something else. I've struggled with that for a very long time, and it is a distraction to always try to make things better, always trying to fix where there is no fixing. Like, I needed to just stop and write and feel, and that's where I thrive. That's my meat and potatoes. I don't think it's going to get any different from this, and as much as it pains me to to say that this is what it's going to be, this is what it's going to be, and I have to be in content with that. I, I'm so grateful to just be able to do this, and um, I should always keep that at the forefront of my mind. When I enjoy my own company, it becomes clear to me that I am enough. With every great idea that has come, because there were no outside forces, I was able to really solidify my wants. Whether or not it was totally amazing or in trend or super cool didn't matter to me because it was something that was truly mine. Straight from the spirit world to my mind and into the physical, that's something that's really special to me. I have been enjoying my own company more and more and it's in this place of solitude where I experience the most discovery. And uh, the other day, I found the cutest little tea spot in my alone time. And there were crepes and fluffy pancakes, and it was so delicious. I had a goddess tea, and it had lime and honey in it. And I have no idea what goddess tea was, but I just saw the name goddess, and I was like, obviously, this is for me. So... <laughs> I drank it, and I was not disappointed. It was so delicious. But anyways, as you can tell, I have a very strong internal dialogue, like I've said numerous times. I like to think it's my higher self speaking to myself. You know, every new creative idea, big or small, started in solitude and a voice that is much cooler than my own. And for that, I am so grateful that I have cultivated a lifestyle where I'm giving my higher self or giving the voice within my head an opportunity to be present. And I think most people don't necessarily do that. You know, I feel like this version of me, how I write and the voice and the talks that I have within my head are more me than the ways that I can express myself when I'm amongst other people. So the fact that you are able to see the relationship that I have with myself, it's it's something very special to me. So I'm always so grateful that you are here to listen and share. But when is the last time that you existed in solitude for a long period of time? And if so, what came of it? Was it a creative idea or a business strategy? And if so, where is it in the physical? I think one thing that my higher self gave me was the idea that how am I able to bring heaven to earth if it never leaves my mind? So I try my best to create things and create good things and things that help and things that entertain and things that remind us that we are all connected and we are all one. And when you hear people like me or you see art that really resonates with your spirit in a way we become closer so I don't know maybe it's because I'm American or I was just raised around a lot of classism 
you have a lot of people around you that think having more means you are more. And these things are not true. But until you actually know it isn't true for yourself, you agree. And you see where you fall in society and you begin to treat yourself accordingly. But having larger things like a bigger platform, a spacious home, also doesn't necessarily make you a solid individual either. And that was something that I had to realize. I was thinking about this the other day and... I was given the image in my mind of like a small box with a sapphire inside and this sapphire has been me my whole life inside this small box and although the box is small and maybe a little worn inside it is an entire gem you know something that symbolizes majesty protection loyalty and wisdom and many will see the box and automatically underestimate its importance. Others will see the sapphire inside and still not know what to do with it. Some will compare the sapphire to a diamond and grade it lesser than because it just may not have the same popularity and retail value as the diamond, but you know, it's still a gem. And it's still beautiful and it's worthy and royalty wears it and it's something to be cherished and that's just life you know there are going to be people that won't be able to see the value in you but you are still valuable and i'm just now at a point where i have to be the one that values myself and cherishes myself and when we go against ourselves it's like coming outside of our little box to be elevated and put on display for many to see and cherish but because it's too rare to fit on a piece of jewelry or some woman's hand you would rather be in the box that was worn or to be carried inside but never truly seen you know and what's the purpose in that so when I'm brave enough to be tastefully put on display or to allow my spirit or my work or my words to speak for me, I do that by creating without resistance, without any borders, and just being the honest story I've always dreamed of telling.